views on heaven vary greatly across different cultures, religions, and belief systems. In many religious traditions, heaven is considered a realm of eternal bliss and perfect harmony. It's often depicted as a place of divine beauty, where individuals experience a profound sense of peace, love, and spiritual fulfillment. While descriptions may differ, many agree that heaven is a place free from suffering, pain, and sorrow. In some interpretations, heaven is envisioned as a magnificent, ethereal realm filled with awe-inspiring sights and sounds. It's imagined as a place of worship where beings express reverence and devotion to a higher power. The imagery often includes elements like radiant light, celestial music, and grand architecture crafted from precious materials. There are also diverse perspectives on the nature of heaven's physicality. Some envision it as a spiritual state rather than a tangible place, emphasizing the transcendence of earthly constraints. Others imagine heaven as a tangible realm with distinct features and landscapes. In certain belief systems, heaven is thought to encompass various levels or dimensions, each tailored to different spiritual states or beings. These realms may serve as stages of spiritual growth or destinations for souls based on their virtues or actions. Ultimately, views on heaven are deeply personal and often shaped by cultural, religious, and philosophical influences. They provide individuals with hope, comfort, and a sense of purpose, as well as a framework for understanding the nature of existence beyond earthly life. In 2 Corinthians 12, verses 2 to 4, the Apostle Paul recounts an extraordinary experience. I know a man in Christ who, 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. This passage reveals a threefold division of heavens stacked one above the other. The highest higher, described by Paul as the third heaven, is the dwelling place of God and the most sacred realm in the universe. It is a realm of utmost purity and holiness. The words spoken there are so sacred that they cannot be uttered outside of this divine realm. The term paradise is of Greek origin, signifying a garden. In this context, it represents God's heavenly garden. Paradise stands as the ultimate destination for all repentant sinners who have faithfully persevered in their journey of faith. On the cross, Jesus made a promise to the penitent thief, assuring him that they would be together in paradise that very day. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me. In Luke 23 verse 43, we encounter a moment of profound significance. The book of Revelation unveils a region referred to as the mid-heaven or the midst of heaven. This term alludes to a substantial expanse where diverse celestial beings traverse. Revelation provides vivid accounts of powerful entities proclaiming themselves from this mid-heaven. One instance depicts an angel soaring through this vast expanse, issuing a solemn warning with resounding intensity. Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound as seen in Revelation 8 verse 13. Moreover, we encounter another angel 
in the midst of this expansive celestial realm bearing the eternal gospel. Their mission is to proclaim this message to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people dwelling on the earth. Revelation 14 verse 6 In a striking vision, an angel is seen standing in the sun, commanding all the birds that traverse the mid-heaven to assemble for the grand feast of the Almighty in Revelation 19 verse 17. These vivid descriptions offer glimpses into the awe-inspiring and multifaceted nature of the heavenly realm as depicted in the scriptures. In Revelation 19 verse 17, the term mesower anima is used in Greek to specifically refer to the mid-heaven, possibly indicating the second heaven. The visible heaven, which can be seen with our natural eyes, is commonly thought of as the first heaven, familiar to all inhabitants of earth. As for the inhabitants of heaven, they are most commonly referred to as angels. The word angel originates from the Greek term angelus, which primarily means messenger. While angels are often considered messengers from heaven, their roles extend beyond conveying messages. They serve various functions as directed by God, and it's important to note that not all angels serve as messengers. Some angels, sent by Satan, work towards his malevolent purposes, leading to conflicts between heavenly forces. This reality highlights that our world is currently a battleground, a stage of ongoing conflict. Moreover, this conflict isn't confined to Earth alone. It plays a significant role in heavenly affairs. The angels dispatched by God have three principal responsibilities. Firstly, they act as divine messengers. Secondly, they serve as God's agents, safeguarding those in peril. These celestial beings, often referred to as guardian angels, provide protection for individuals facing threats or challenges. In Matthew 18 verse 10, Jesus imparts a crucial message advising not to disregard the significance of young ones. He explains that in heaven, these little ones have their own guardian angels who perpetually stand before the presence of the Father. This suggests that these celestial guardians are divinely appointed to watch over and protect vulnerable children. Furthermore, the heavenly realm encompasses a diverse array of angels, each tasked with distinct roles. In addition to guardian angels, there are also warrior angels engaged in intense spiritual battles against opposing forces. While the third heaven embodies unbroken tranquility, the same cannot be said for the first and second heavens. Contrary to the common notion of uninterrupted serenity and adoration, certain scriptures unveil a different reality in the second heaven. This celestial domain occasionally serves as a battleground where conflicting angelic forces, some aligned with God and others with Satan, engage in spiritual warfare. It is within these heavenly realms that Satan launches accusations against faithful Christians on earth who are devoted to serving the Lord. In Revelation 12 verse 10, a resounding voice in heaven proclaimed, Now salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. This verse depicts Satan as the relentless accuser of believers, persistently making accusations before God. The passage also foretells Satan's eventual expulsion from heaven. Yet, until that time arrives, 
It is evident that he still maintains a presence somewhere in the celestial realms, filling the atmosphere with malevolent charges against God's people. Following this, a cautionary verse is issued to the inhabitants of the earth, warning them of the impending arrival of the devil, who will descend from heaven to the earth and sea. Rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. These verses anticipate a period when Satan's time is limited. While this time may be imminent, it has not yet transpired. Undoubtedly, the events described are yet to unfold. Consequently, we must acknowledge the present activities of Satan. Frequently, many Christians speak as though Satan is confined solely to hell, but this is not accurate. Hell is governed by two satanic rulers named Death and Hades, but Satan himself roams freely throughout the universe. In the book of Revelation 20, verse 13, it is written, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. This scenario is also depicted in Job 1, verses 6 and 7, where it's described how the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. When the Lord asked Satan where he had been, Satan replied that he had been roaming the earth. It's important to recognize that Satan is not confined to hell, as some may habitually think. The key distinction between earth and heaven lies in the fact that earth has been tainted by sin, whereas heaven remains untainted. The sin of humanity has permeated the earth, creating a separation from God's original intent. This separation stems from Adam and Eve's disobedience, which led to a rupture in their fellowship with God. As Romans 5 verse 19 states, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Consequently, the effects of this disobedience have been passed down through generations, resulting in the pervasive presence of sin. As the Bible notes, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. In summary, the pervasive influence of sin is an integral part of the human experience on earth, distinguishing it from the sinless perfection of heaven. This distinction highlights the ongoing spiritual battle between good and evil, as well as the importance of seeking redemption and reconciliation with God. Genesis 6 verse 12 and Isaiah 24 verse 5 and 6 vividly portray the earth's defilement due to the transgressions of its inhabitants. They have flouted divine laws, altered sacred ordinances, and breached the everlasting covenant. This has led to a grievous affliction akin to a crippling ailment, corrupting and fragmenting everything it touches. In stark contrast, heaven resonates with the resplendent glory of the Lord, serving as his divine throne. As the epitome of absolute holiness, God cannot countenance sin and must mete out judgment upon it. Habakkuk 1 verse 13 underscores his purity, affirming that his eyes are too untainted to bear witness to evil. Yet, his boundless love has provided a means to expunge the stain of sin. Through the sacrificial act of Christ on the cross, Sin was crucified, and we were redeemed from its damning consequences. 
By offering himself as a substitute, Christ absorbed the judgment rightfully meant for us, presenting us blameless before the Heavenly Father. This act stands as a testament to Jesus Christ, the universal Savior, who singularly spans the chasm between heaven and earth. The Bible teaches that through one man's obedience, many will find righteousness. Romans 5 verse 19 It can be a tough truth to acknowledge, but we are born, choose, and live in sin. Thankfully, God, in His grace, has provided a way for our salvation, a precious gift in a world tainted by sin. What sets heaven apart from earth is that Jesus Christ left the splendor of heaven to descend to this sin-ridden world for one purpose, to make our eternal salvation a reality. This is a profound distinction that holds immense significance for both God in heaven and us on earth. In heaven, we will be met with countless awe-inspiring wonders. Yet, above all, the most awe-inspiring sight will be the Savior of the world, shining in His unparalleled glory. Your eyes will behold the King in His beauty and view a land that stretches afar as seen in Isaiah 33 verse 17. Jesus Christ granted us a glimpse of this splendor when he unveiled a vision of heaven to the Apostle John, instructing him to record what he witnessed. Then I saw a lamb. I heard every creature in heaven singing to him, who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Revelation 5, verse 6 and 13. While it's only natural for us to imagine and wonder about the marvels of heaven, it's important to remember that God, in His wisdom, has only given us a taste of our eternal abode. Our human language falls short in capturing the full scope of such majesty. Indeed, the grandeur of earthly possessions pales in comparison to the radiant light of heaven. In Revelation 21 verse 21, John struggled to find earthly comparisons for the brilliance of heaven. He likened it to the radiance of a precious jewel, as clear as crystal. In this celestial city, the streets aren't paved with gravel or asphalt, but with pure gold that's so clear it's like transparent glass. Even the gates are extraordinary, each one crafted from a single pearl. These descriptions offer us mere glimpses of the splendor awaiting us. On earth, we grapple with limitations, but in heaven, all things are made new. Our current understanding can only capture snapshots of what lies ahead. To fully grasp this glory, we will need a heavenly transformation. Let the anticipation of heaven's magnificence fill your soul. It will be a source of strength and endurance until the day your eyes behold it in full. As Peter assures, those whose hope rests in heaven will receive a grand welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, in 2 Peter 1 verse 11. Imagine him opening his arms, inviting his people in. In that moment, he'll turn to his Father and declare, The glory you bestowed upon me, I have now given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one. Now, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly come before you 
asking for the awakening of the fullness of your Holy Spirit within us. Assist us in nurturing our relationship with the Holy Spirit and empower us to utilize the gifts bestowed upon us by Jesus. Lord, you made us a promise, assuring us of the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in your name. He will teach us all things and bring to our remembrance everything you have shared with us. Help us understand that it's okay not to comprehend everything, for the Holy Spirit holds all knowledge. Grant us the wisdom to trust in his understanding of every aspect of our lives. As the sun rises each day, dispelling the darkness of night, bring clarity to our minds with the light of your truth. Grant us peace of mind, calming our troubled hearts. When our souls feel like stormy seas, guide us to find stability and purpose in the path you've set before us. We trust in your boundless love, dear God, knowing that you will lead us out of the darkness just as the sun rises each day. Kind Father, we humbly seek the power and wisdom of Christ's mind through the bestowal of your Holy Spirit. Grant us the strength to rise above every trial and temptation that comes our way. Mold me, Lord, into a true follower of Christ. According to 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. Shape my mind to reflect the likeness of Christ. Holy Spirit, take residence in my life. May I abide in you, and may your twelve fruits manifest in me. Grant me your spiritual gifts to navigate through life's challenges. Holy Spirit, seek the salvation of all humanity. Illuminate them with your truth and shower them with your love. May they unite in faith, hope, and love, giving glory to God. Send forth laborers into the harvest, inspired and guided by you, the very soul of the missionary church. King of glory, send us the promise of the Father, the Spirit of truth. May the counselor, who proceeds from you, enlighten us and infuse us with all truth, as you have promised. Amen.